But one question that I get asked a lot and that I see people asking a lot is where do I start? So do you want to walk people through maybe some kind of timeline or what resources you like for people to start with? Let's say you're a very beginner to the LSAT. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. So the first thing I would suggest is actually not to take a diagnostic practice test. A lot of people will suggest that and there are certainly arguments in favor of it, but the results of an initial diagnostic can typically be pretty discouraging. Mm -hmm. And it's natural that you wouldn't score where you ultimately want to because you haven't exposed yourself to the LSAT yet. It's like a foreign language. And so most people don't do well at first glance. Like I mentioned, I certainly didn't. I got a 152 and that was not indicative of my full potential, but at the time, it seemed like a disaster, especially the logic games, which were so unfamiliar to me. And so I'd say, don't take a diagnostic, or at least if you do, take it with like 10,000 grains of salt. Right. What you want to do instead is just say, I don't know this exam yet, and that's okay. I can break it down step by step, day by day, and figure out exactly what I should be doing and what not to do. And that's actually one of the first things I did when I created the LSAT blog was to create study schedules week by week and day by day to break it down for students. So let's say you wanna start with logic games because that's the most unfamiliar, scary section at first. You start with the logic games, you do them by type, ordering, grouping, combination, and so on. But even within ordering, you do easy ordering, then moderate ordering, then difficult ordering, then easy grouping, moderate grouping, difficult grouping, and so on. So by type and by difficulty, so you're not exposing yourself to anything too challenging or too daunting at first. You kind of meet yourself where you're at in that moment. So in my <laughs> schedule, I'll say, read this page in this prep book, read these articles on my site, watch these videos, then complete these specific practice problems from the official LSAT exams. And then I'll do the same for logical reasoning, the same for reading comp. In terms of timelines, I'd say most folks want to devote two to three months. That's really not enough time, in my opinion. Right. I typically find students reach their fullest potential in at least five to six months, if not longer. And I'm not saying it should take you a full year like it did for me, but the LSAT is worth the time investment of at least five to six months, given how important it is in the admissions process. Thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as I release them. And feel free to reach out if you need anything at all as you move forward with your prep. I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.